Good morning, my family. It's another day that the Lord has blessed us with. If you're watching this video, you are blessed. God has blessed you with another day. Thank him for it. Honor him and be faithful to him. Amen. Um, right now, it's about 3.53 in the morning. It's Wednesday, February 10th, 2016. This is my time of devotion. A time that I share my devotion with all of you. I hope and pray that all of you are blessed through it and that you continue to be faithful and endure. Amen. I have an interesting set of devotion um, scriptures this morning, which um, which which strikes a chord in the human in the human nature, I believe, it, for me at least, and I believe to some point and extent to most people. And the title of it is Loving Your Enemies. Loving Your Enemies. Oh, son, you know, I gotta admit, when I first read these scriptures back when I was uh, a new believer, it didn't sit well with me. And, you know, perhaps maybe if to some out there, it's not sitting, it, it will take a while before you can grasp and get your your heart around this script, this set of scriptures. But let's just see what, let's just let the Lord teach us and speak to us. Let's read the scriptures. Amen. Excuse me. Matthew 5, Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 to 48. But our focus scripture going to be on verse 48, okay? So let me read. It says, love your enemies. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and unrighteousness. For if you love those who love you, what reward will you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only the brothers what are you doing out of what are you doing out of the ordinary? Don't even the Gentiles do the same? The unbelievers? Verse 48. This is our focus scripture. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. Ah. That right there. Be perfect. Therefore, just as your heavenly Father is perfect, okay? We keep hearing believers using the, nobody's perfect, using that term, nobody's perfect. You know, that's just, you see, that's just a setup for failure when you use that term. We, 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 we are made, we are made perfect through Christ, Christ Jesus, through the Holy Spirit being in us. Therefore, we must walk in his ways. We can control ourselves. But let me just, let me just add a little um, commentary to our focus scripture, which is you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Perfection is a goal toward, towards which we move. Okay? Perfection is a goal towards which we move. We're moving towards a goal, which is perfection in Christ Jesus. Okay? So as long as we stay on that track and we continue to stay on that track, we are being made perfect in Christ Jesus. How can we be perfect? Number one, in character. In this life, we cannot be flawless, 
but we can aspire to be as much like Christ as possible. Okay? And as long as we try and we always be mindful of our mistakes, when we do make the mistake, we, we repent and we say to our Heavenly Father, sorry, Lord, please help me to strengthen this area of weakness. Forgive me of my sins. Don't repeat it and keep trekking on forward. We are being made perfect. Okay? You understand? It's a process. So we recognize our mistake. We seek repentance. And then we keep moving forward. We stay on the road to perfection. Okay? Number two, in holiness. Like the Pharisees, we are to separate ourselves from the world's sinful values. But unlike the Pharisees, we are to be devoted to God's desires rather than our own and carry His love and mercy into the world. What do you mean by that? The Pharisees. The Pharisees was in in the uh, during the time of Jesus, they were the religious leaders, and the and the Pharisees made it made it a point to dress up, dress up in this in robes with extended um, with extended sleeves, arms that hanging down here, and um, and and they they, they looked. They wanted to be recognized. They wanted to draw attention to them, but their hearts was desperately wicked. You know, a lot of a lot of the a lot of the a lot of the rebuke and and debate Jesus had while in his ministry was with the religious leaders. He knew it was phony. And so we gotta we gotta understand, but when 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 I say, but unlike the Pharisees, we are to be devoted to God's desires rather than our own, which is what the Pharisees was. They they always looked after their own interests. They would tell you to, to live a certain way, but they themselves wouldn't be living that way. Okay. Number three, in maturity. In maturity. We can't achieve Christ-like character and holy living all at once. Okay? Maturity. This is this is important. We can't achieve Christ-like character and holy living all at once. But we must grow towards maturity and wholeness. Just as we expect different behaviors from a baby, a child, a teenager, and an adult, so God expects different behaviors from us, depending on our stage of spiritual development, okay? We got to understand that every single one of us believers are at different stages in our spiritual growth in Christ Jesus. We are all at different stages, and we, we must be mindful of that. So to some you may be matured in certain areas, and to another person, they might be not so mature, or vice versa. So it's not, it's it's in our best interests and crisis to recognize that not everybody is on the same level or wavelength as far as growth in Christ as you. Amen. I remember when I first started, uh, when I first started getting into leadership, the leadership ministry, you know, I would get frustrated, yeah, because I never understand. And then as I started to understand, I, I still remained frustrated because people I was trying to con uh, encourage never understand. So we gotta. We, that's why we gotta always be mindful of our growth, not only our growth in Christ, but others. Okay, we all go, we all have different stages. Amen. 
Less. Number four, in love. We can seek to love others as completely as God loves us. Yeah? You know, oh, I was, the scripture this morning is about loving our enemy. Yeah? And our fourth example is love. We can seek to love others as completely as God loves us. You know, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is, when he sent his son, it was for the remissions of the world's sin. It was for everybody. Whoever called upon the name of Jesus Christ can be saved, okay? will be saved. It's for everyone, sinners and believers alike. Yeah. And that's the love that God demonstrated to us. And so when our focus scripture, when our scriptures, the set of scriptures talks about praying for others, we got to carry that same Christ-like attitude. Even loving our enemies, you know, pray for them. You know, um, we don't have to, we don't have to fellowship with them. We don't have to hang with them, but we pray for them. Yeah. We pray for them that they too may come to the realization that um, God is in control. That God is in control. Yeah. You know, uh, we too were lost. I was lost. And, and, and recent, you know. Like Paul, I was, I was saved. Was a light just went on, and I, and God told me, "You better, you, you gotta start doing right. Otherwise, you're not gonna live long. You gotta be honest, be truthful to me, loyal to love, to the Lord, so, and that's what God expects from us. And so, we strive for perfection." Because through the Holy Spirit who, who dwells in us, he perfects us. Yeah? It's an ongoing process. Ongoing process. Yeah? It's not easy. It'll never be easy. Yeah? In fact, it gets harder as you... It gets harder when you become a believer. Life is not easy. Yeah, I used to... At my, my, my infancy stages of, of, of a believer, I used to... I used to think, wow, excuse me. Wow, how come? Now I'm going through, it seems like I go through more headache now than, than uh, before I was with Christ. Oh, it's not more headache. Now you're being, your mind and your heart are being open to wrong and right. And, and uh, you are starting to recognize the, the things that you know belong doing and the Holy Spirit is quickening your heart and your mind to let you know, don't do it. Or well, this is what you do, okay? So beautiful. When you walk with Christ and you understand, even though it may be frustrated at times, you can, bring, you can find rest in Christ Jesus. When you come to him and just pray and just cast all your cares upon him, he'll take care of you. Amen? I know this was a kind of long one, almost 15 minutes, but I love you all, my family. Be faithful, be encouraged, and endure. God bless.